from? When you think about it, this is a pretty open-ended question. Because you're essentially asking someone to respond with where they last were, where their parents are, or what they consider to be their home. Why am I telling you about this, though? If you think about the last response of what a home is, like where you're from, you can have many different responses, just depending on the person. So growing up overseas has granted me the exploration of this question, where is a home? And is it possible to make a home just about anywhere in the world without having any previous support structures, like your friends or your family? If you think about a home as being somewhere where you just come and you go and you live and you eat and you sleep and you wake up and you return to every day, it won't become much else other than a concrete structure. However, if you think about a home as somewhere where you have your memories, your memories of yourself growing and your successes and your failures and where you first fell in love and all that, then home will become somewhere where your heart is. But how do we get to this final stage of considering a new place a home? <coughs> Researchers and psychologists have come up with something called the four stages of adjustment. And these four stages vary by intensity and time, depending on the person. The first stage is the honeymoon stage. So the honeymoon stage is described as something that um, gives a person a sense of awe, and they're just enamored by their location. This picture was taken when I was five years old in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and my class took a field trip to the rainforest and we got to ride on Asian elephants. Now tell me, what five-year-old would not want to ride on an Asian elephant? <laughs> I was in the honeymoon stage, my first year in Malaysia. This picture was taken midway through a hike in Cape Town, South Africa. Midway through, I took a break. I turned around, and I saw this amazing landscape of the vast expanse of ocean and mountain ranges that greeted me. I had to stop and think for a second of just how beautiful this landscape was. So everything in the honeymoon stage and your new location is beautiful to you. Then you come upon the negotiation stage. This is when you realize not everything is perfect about your new place. And I like in the negotiation stage about learning to use chopsticks. Learning to use chopsticks is quite discouraging. <laughs> um, you can be frustrated and you might even want to just give up and use a fork instead. <laughs> However, if you get through the frustrations and discouragements, the end reward is blissful. The negotiation stage may also be quite overwhelming. You can be scared, and it does come in waves of intensity. <laughs> it can also be full of confusion. So, to give you an example of this, Fusion. One day I was taking a walk along a road and I stumbled upon some oyster shells on the side of it. Can anyone tell me where these oyster shells might be in this picture? Well, they were on Howard's Knob actually. And when I came upon them, I was actually quite perplexed as to why they were 500 miles from the ocean on top of a mountain. <laughs> so this confusion indicated that I was still in the negotiation stage in Boone, in my second year of living here. Thankfully though, people come to the adjustment stage. So this is a balance between the honeymoon stage and the negotiation stage, and you come to a middle ground. It's when you realize that you start to appreciate everything, or just even some small idiosyncrasies of the culture and location. This picture was taken on a winter's day while I was walking through my neighborhood in Belgrade, Serbia. 
I realized that I was at a, a calm place, and I wasn't starting to, like, I was starting to appreciate what the place had to offer me. I had a sense of peace. And what may have annoyed you in the negotiation stage, actually, you find funny now. So this is a picture of a bus stop. And I took it as a sign that I was beginning to appreciate all the imperfections of this new country. And finally, we come to the mastery stage. <laughs> so the mastery stage is in the form of me um, coming to the peak of a mountain after a grueling hike and seeing this wonderful view of Table Mountain in Cape Town, South Africa while eating a peanut butter jelly sandwich. <laughs> so the mastery stage is also, um, may also be accompanied with a sense that you are fully adjusted and you feel finally at home. But to get to this final stage of mastery, people do require their own um, specific requirements. And to find out what these were, I had to interview 20 people and ask them questions like, where are you from? Where do you consider home? And what do you personally need in considering somewhere a home? The first response that I got was security. So imagine this. I was given the opportunity to stay with a family in Cape Town, South Africa, in a township. Their house was no larger than a stage, but the moment I stepped into it, I was greeted with this sense sense of warmth, welcome, and just love in general, despite being in one of the most dangerous countries in the world. I felt secure. Some people want their parents there. Others just like having their stuff. And for my sister, she likes a challenge of acclimating to a new culture or environment. She moves about every four or five years depending on the location, if it no longer offers her a challenge. Although I do not see any shortage of challenges while living in Brooklyn, New York City. <laughs> Others just like the routine. So my dad, in Wilmington, North Carolina, he established a home by waking up at 6 a.m. every day, going running for an hour, coming back, making breakfast, having coffee with my mother. And then at about 9 a.m., he'll go for his second exercise session of the day. And at about 11 a.m., when my sister and I are finally starting to wake up, he returns. Yet in this whole process, he establishes a sense of home. It's familiar to him. Familiarity may also come in the form of seeing a Burger King on the road in Costa Rica. Yet the most common theme I found while interviewing people was that people like having connections to other people. This is a base, basic necessity. Now this makes sense given that people are social beings. Because without people, how are you going to create the memories that will allow you to connect to other individuals who will then allow you to create a sense of security and belonging? Who knows? Maybe you'll find yourself walking down the street one day and you'll come upon a man. You sit next to him and you start to get to know him. He might become your mentor in finding this new home. Because what it comes down to is that people are more similar than they are different, no matter what, where you are in the world or what culture you're in. So what does this mean? One day, you might find yourself walking to the beach in northern Peru, going for a surf. You might even find yourself looking at the ocean while on the pier and going to North Carolina. You might even find yourself going down the street, waiting for your friend, while meeting up with them for a coffee in Belgrade, Serbia. You could even find yourself angry having a coffee in espresso news. 
and you can even find yourself in the bush of Kenya, just realizing how far you've come from that beginning point when you were not in a home to the end point where you do think or you know that you are at home finally. And as Edward Sharp and the Magnetic Zeros like to say, home is wherever I'm with you. So essentially, home is where the heart is. It can even be in a person. What does this mean? And what is, I want to leave you with. I encourage all of you to just go beyond your comfort zone and step outside your boundaries. Whether you're graduating like I am this year or staying in Boone, get to know your local culture, create new connections with other individuals, or don't be afraid to explore the world. Because who knows, you might end up somewhere you least expect.